Greetings folks, Two and Proper here, bringing you yet another in my series. And when last you remember I was talking about Pocket 380s in my 4 Pocket 380s video, featured in the 4 Pocket 380s video, there were four different Pocket 380s and 150 Action Express Desert Eagle, which was, of course, not a Pocket pistol. But here, I hearken to your memory when I said about the Glock 42. For 380 automatic, I don't think that I would choose a Glock for that. I'm, it's it's a good gun for it. I mean, certainly, if somebody wants to give me one of these, uh, you know, I'll get you my address. I certainly want one. But um, to pay money for it and stuff, I don't think that I would do that. I already have a Glock. Yeah, uh, about that. Um, well, I did some more thinking, obviously, because uh, you saw the title of this video, and I was not going to get the Glock 42. As a matter of fact, I was going to get the Sig Sauer P238 for my Pocket 380, if you remember, or I was going to get the Taurus TCP. I just decided to get the Glock 42, and I've got a lot of reasons for having done that, and shootability, uh, sight picture, and ease of takedown and the fact that it's exactly like a real mini little full-size Glock I thought that this was the best option at 13.76 ounces so at 13.76 ounces that is not a bad weight and as you can see this is quite an attractive gun I got the one with the gray frame and I really liked that which of course it pushed me right over the edge and I went ahead and uh, excuse the pun pulled the trigger to get this one righty here and this one came with two flush magazines okay I, it didn't come with the extended ones that some of them come with they're still both six rounders when you get the extended ones but uh, mine came with two flush magazines so I opted to go ahead and get the Pierce grip Glock 42 plus one extension which gives me seven rounds and here it is I'm kind of glad I did that because I was going to get mag guts and have seven rounds, but this does give me an extension plus seven rounds. And I still may even get mag guts and put them in here, which will give me seven rounds in a flush fit magazine for more concealability. So that's probably what I'll end up doing. But my thinking on getting the Glock 42 was that it is 13.76 ounces unloaded and it is 17.29 ounces loaded. So it's lighter loaded than the M&P Shield, for example, is unloaded. So that's a good example. But another reason I decided to get this is because it is very, very thin. And we'll get into size comparisons with other pistols in a minute, but I just wanted a pistol that was more shootable. And I checked out other people's YouTube videos and I saw that they were having a grand time shooting their Glock 42s and I said I want me some of that action ready there so I went ahead and decided on this one it is a very good pistol so far and I have shot it now the Glock 42 shoots very well I took it to the range already and I had a good time with it and I shot four different kinds of ammunition and uh, shootability was one of the reasons that I chose the Glock 42 because say if you compare it to the LCP2 or the TCP, any of the very small uh, pocket 380s like the P3AT from kel or any of those others, uh, this is going to be a lot easier to shoot. Even with just two fingers on the grip like you see here, and my third one would be just touching the plate on the flush floor plate it still is very manageable because you've got this big indent here with kind of a beaver tail on the back that brings your hand up close and you still have a lot of uh, pistol surface in your grip and it felt very good shooting the flush plate magazine that it comes with it was not uncomfortable in the least and slightly more comfortable adding the finger grip for the uh, pinky extension that makes it a little bit more comfortable but still neither way was particularly uncomfortable and for a small 380 of 13.76 ounces this shoots more like a full-size gun so I was impressed with that of course it's got the typical Glock sights now the recoil when shooting this pistol is pretty tame 
and I think it's because of the build of this pistol and the size of it. It is bigger than the Pocket 380s. And again, some people don't consider this to be a Pocket 380. I do, but the recoil is very manageable. It shoots very uh, straight back, very nice. It's very comfortable. Doesn't hurt the hands. And of course, the grip is just like the Gen 4 grip. So it's uh, a little aggressive, but it is not painful. It's not going to send you to the hospital or anything. So if you wish, and it would probably look cool, you can get some black talon grips on this. I think that would probably look pretty cool and feel awesome. But the gun still feels very good in your hand. So the recoil wasn't bad at all. And the recoil with the different ammunitions that I tried wasn't bad either. And I was shooting the Underwood ammunition. I was shooting the Perfecta ammunition. I was shooting Hornady's American Gunner ammunition. And I was shooting the carry load that I'm going to be carrying, which is uh, Underwood ammo. And I'll talk more about the Underwood ammo in just a minute. So I did shoot those four different kinds of ammunition. Didn't have any problems whatsoever. The pistol ran flawlessly with all four ammunitions. I didn't even have any problems with the slide holding back or anything like that. But then again, I'm not one of those people that rides the slide release. So my thumb is usually here. But it shot very well. And I would suspect the way this thing shoots that it's going to be good for the uh, female shooters. But again, I tried perfect the ammunition with this thing. That's the Walmart ammunition that everybody recognizes. It ran flawlessly. It was a very smooth shooting ammunition. And I'm telling you what, folks, for the money, perfect the ammunition is really awesome. I really like that ammunition for uh, target use. And the Underwood Extreme Defender ammunition, which you can see right here, looks like a Phillips head screwdriver. But uh, I got this on purpose, this Underwood ammunition, and it shot very well too. But the reason I got this Underwood ammunition to carry in this pistol is because this is not an expanding bullet. And with 380, you can still work with that by the ammunition you get, and I chose this one. And I chose this one because it's a 1400 foot per second, 65 grain cartridge, which has the bigger louvers cut out here on the side, which is supposed to displace more tissue, but it's a non-expanding round. And I definitely wanted a little bit more penetration if I need it uh, to use with a 380. And I've been impressed by some of the videos that I've seen on that ammunition. So, and I'm gonna go with that. I'm really pleased with the idea of putting that in my pistol. I'm not sure that I would use it for anything over 9mm just because of its penetrating power and the fact that it doesn't expand. But for 380, yeah, I would think that would be very good. So I went ahead and got it. The gun shoots well. As you can see, it's got a very good firing pin impact right dead center of your center fire cartridge. Very nice. And I also shot Hornady's American Gunner. Of course I picked some of that up at Dunham's a long time ago and I had some left over but for the purpose of trying different ammunitions I brought that out too and it ran flawlessly through that and the other ammunition that I brought to run through this thing was the uh, Remington stuff also from Walmart just a standard green box Remington 380 and it ran flawlessly too so I'm expecting that the problems that they had with the Glock 42 are all over unless you still have the old magazines. This one came with two generation three type magazines. So by that point, the problem with feeding and ejecting and all that other stuff was all over. So, And I'm glad that I had four different ammunitions to run through it to test it because it's really good to try different ammunitions, especially if you know you're getting a new pistol. And uh, if you didn't want to buy a whole box of certain kind of ammunitions just to uh, test out a new pistol, well, hit up some of your friends and see if they've got five rounds of each or whatever the deal is, just so you can get some good idea whether or not you're going to run it or get whole boxes. It's up to you. But I was happy with the way this ran the ammunition. Double taps with this pistol uh, came off just right. I love the double taps. But I'm going to tell you what. Glock advertises that this is a 5.5 pound trigger pull and I seriously doubt it. This is not a 5.5 pound trigger pull. Now mind you, I'm not bitching about the trigger pull. As a matter of fact, I'm not bitching about the fact that this is a 380 either. Like a lot of people were crying and whining because Glock came out with the 380 in single stack first. 
boo-hoo. But the trigger pull on this pistol, I would have to say, is not five pounds. This feels like, well, more like eight pounds. It's not a bad thing. It's not necessarily a deterrent for me, but uh, that sure as hell is not five pounds. Uh, let's get a look at the reset. You reset queens, okay. Pull on up. Oh, that's really clean. And the trigger, having a Glock trigger and a 380 pistol was another feature as far as I was concerned and contributed to my decision in getting this because it's just a better trigger than you're going to get in most 380 pistols. So this, I'm very pleased with my decision to get it. I wasn't going to get it, but I'm very pleased now with my decision to get this pistol. Very happy. Now this pistol and size, if you're still not sure what size this pistol is and you have other pistols in your collection, I will say here is the Glock 19. Okay, here's some perspective for you right here. The Glock 19 is significantly longer significantly taller, significantly wider, and significantly heavier. So there you go. You could actually hide this gun behind the Glock 19. I would put this in size pretty much close to my uh, Ruger LCR. I would compare this in size also with the Bursa Thunder 380. For those of you who have a Springfield, unloaded of course folks, okay? This is the Springfield XD45 subcompact. Let's go ahead and line these up. See how it pans out here. All right, so uh, slide to slide. This is even quite smaller than the Springfield XD45 subcompact, which is of course a small gun. It's designed to be. And it is much thinner, much lighter, and a little bit shorter. So those are some size comparisons right there. And if you compare this to say your Mosin Nagant rifle, it is much smaller. So put it in your pocket. I do consider this to be a pocket pistol, by the way. I consider this to be small enough to put in the pocket. I already have a pocket holster for this thing and tried it out. Of course, I have a zillion holsters, but uh, this one fits perfect. And I put this in my pocket, no problemo. It was in my cargo shorts pocket and that fits very well too. Now the specs on this pistol are as follows. You've got 4.13 inches high, okay? And that's from the flush plate to the top of the slide, so not including this. 4.13 inches high. That's your important dynamic for concealability right there. And I have already carried this, by the way. It's 5.94 inches long, okay? And the cool thing is it's got a 3.25 inch barrel. So you're getting even closer to a four inch barrel and that's gotta be contributing to the accuracy of this pistol as well. And it is 0.94 inches wide. It's thinner than a lot of handguns out there so it's not very wide. And to compare it to the Glock 19, it is considerably thinner which means it's easier to conceal, which means you're not gonna feel as much while you're packing this thing. And you certainly won't feel this pistol in your waistband as much as you would when you try to stick your most in the gun rifle in your waistband. Again, uh, that's kind of problematic. But this is a very light pistol for its size. You know, at 13.76 ounces unloaded, that is not a very heavy pistol. And that was one of the determining factors for me getting the Glock 42 as well. Range time fun, uh, nice and concealable, not too heavy. And I don't mind saying that I do think this gray frame is slick looking. I really like that, kind of classy. Boy, what am I doing with a classy piece like this? <laughs> anyway. So this is the Glock 42. Uh, this is a pretty accurate pistol. It was very fun to shoot. The recoil is not bad. So yeah, if you've got compromised hand strength uh, and having shot four different kinds of ammunition in a couple boxes of 380s, yeah, I would put somebody who needs a lighter recoiling handgun with a halfway decent impact into something like this. I certainly would. It feels very good. 
I know there's a lot of people out there that are going to tell you, get something bigger. And yeah, I'll tell you too, that you want to carry the most powerful cartridge that you can carry and uh, control while you're using the handgun. So you don't want to choose anything that's too powerful that you can't control the handgun. But uh, with that being said, this is just the pistol that I'm going to be stuffing in my bikini and sarong setup. And so I don't want anything very heavy and I don't care that it's 380, especially I'm carrying these Underwood ammunition. So I think I'm going to be pretty pleased with carrying this. But again, if it's going to be your only gun and if the 380 is the highest caliber that you can handle and still control the pistol, by all means, 380 is no slouch. We still haven't found anyone who's willing to stand in front of a 380 that denounces it. So, you know, worry not, my friend. Anyway, this is it. This is the Glock 42. The Glock 42 arrives. This is not the premium review, of course. You'll be seeing more of this pistol in the future. You'll probably be seeing it in some of my summer shoot videos because we're getting in the summer. And I just want you to know that this pistol is so far so good. This is going to be my summer carry, very sure. And uh, there you go. This is it. The Glock 42. But that's it, folks. I'm too improper. My email address is scrolling across the bottom of the screen as we speak right now. That's too improper at gmail.com. Right. And I will answer you provided you're not being a tool about what it is you're saying. And if I've got the time. And don't forget, folks, check out www.notjustguns.com. Okay. They've got everything. And if they don't have it already in the store, they can get it for you. But www.notjustguns.com, or if you're in Mason, Michigan, stop by and see Mike and his crew. But this is it, folks, and look for more of me and Tattoo Cat to be shooting this summer. We've got some shooting to do. But thanks for watching, folks. God bless America, and keep on protecting your families and yourselves. I can't imagine the person who wouldn't do that. It's always the right thing to do.